Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed judges, thank you for the opportunity to present today. Over the next 30 years, we're going to add 2 billion people to this planet. Arable land is a scarce resource, and climate change risks production volumes. One of the biggest challenges of our, uh, of our times is how are we going to sustainably feed the world of 2050? One answer to this question is to look at what crops use the most land today. And there are really four of these. There's wheat, maize, rice, and soybeans. And soybeans are primarily produced for animal feed, and that's because they have a very high protein content. You can see, oh, you can see that soybeans are produced in these three countries, primarily, and shipped all around the world in a very long value chain. The USDA tells us that if we continue to use soybeans as an animal feed protein ingredient, we'll need 90 million more tons per year by 2025, using a huge amount of land and at a $27 billion increase per year to this market. That increase in value incentivizes some really scary things like deforestation. And so there's a huge question as to where we'll get this animal feed protein. This problem, of course, gets worse from 2025 to 2050. We think we have a solution to this problem uh, through this crop right here. So this crop is called Lemna. It's the smallest flowering crop in the world. It happens to grow incredibly quickly. It grows on the top of water and has a very high protein content. And that high protein content makes it a really great animal feed protein ingredient as a substitute for soybean meal. At Dry Grow, we've been working on ways to produce industrial scale production facilities for this crop to supplement soy meal production and fill this market gap. Uh, using this technique, we can produce eight times faster than soybean production. We can produce using 99% less water. And most importantly, we can grow on arid land. So that means we can undercut that long value chain and grow closer to country of consumption. Our work started at Oxford University in 2015. Um, we have two patents through to PCT. We've partnered with five academic institutions. And we have four more patents in development. We grow using very long, customized greenhouses. Uh, we've learned a lot from the vertical farming industry and advances that have been made there. And we're working towards uh, fully managed internal environments to create consistent growing conditions. We haven't done this alone. We've worked with all of these partners um, in funding and partnership relationships. And we think this production method can grow much more sustainably, can solve uh, it can contribute to these uh, uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and solve this big market gap that we're facing in the future. At Dry Grow, we aim to introduce a new commodity crop at mass industrial scale. And this may seem audacious, but it's absolutely necessary. Thank you very much. <laughs>